Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is I back again with Critical Failure. As you can see, the setup's a little bit different instead of me driving. Let's see if I can actually make this kind of stand up better. Uh, oops. Not really. Oh, that's better. Uh, but yeah, I'm actually off today and tomorrow, so I'm trying to get a couple videos done in preparation. As you guys know, I do two videos a day, so this video and the next video are going to be posted today. I'm going to try and get a couple more so I don't have to worry about driving and doing it because I'm... I already talked to Ed and I already have a personal distaste for doing it while driving and so I'm trying to make sure that I don't do it while driving as much as I can. But yeah, let's get straight into the statistics of this. Uh, next creature in Mordecanus Tomophos, it is the Leviathan I believe? Let me make sure. Yeah, it's the Leviathan. Now it is an elder elemental, I'm assuming there's multiples of these, like it doesn't say that they're not. but. Uh, I'm going to go into the entire Elder Elemental uh, synopsis, and then I'm going to go into the Leviathan specifically. Uh, on their native planes, Elemental sweep across the weird and temp temp tempestuous, tempestuous landscape. Some possess greater power, gained by feeding on their lesser can and adding the essence of creatures they have devoured to their own until they become something extraordinary. When summoned, these Elder Elementals manifest as beings of apocalyptic capability, entities whose mere existence promises destruction. Deadly when summoned. The methods for summoning elder elementals remain hidden in forbidden tomes or inscribed in walls of lost temples raised to honor the elemental, the elder elemental eye. Only casters of super, superlative skill have even the faintest chance of calling forth one of these monsters, and the spell catchers are often destroyed by the effort. Thus, only the most unhinged and nihilistic members of elemental evil cults attempt such a summoning, in the hopes of hastening the world toward some cataclysmic end. Elemental nature? An elder elemental doesn't require air, food, drink, or sleep. So, that's the entire synopsis for elder elementals in general. So that's the Leviathan, the uh, Phoenix, the, uh, the Elder Tempest, and the Taratan, which I find funny how... They all have really cool names. But, uh, the Leviathan. Let's get into its synopsis specifically. A towering wall of water that drags ships down to the ocean's depths and washes away coastal settlements. The pho phenomena tip... Yeah, it says typifies. I, I thought it was my dyslexia. Uh, typifies the destruction of, le of a Leviathan can unleash on the world. When called forth, a Leviathan arises from a large body of water to form an immense serpent-shaped creature. And uh, I'm going to take a picture and post it onto uh, the thumbnail to show you guys what a Leviathan does look like. Yeah, it's actually really cool. It, it, yeah, it's, it looks like a dragon, or at least what I would imagine a very large dragon to look like. But anyways, let's get into the stats. The Leviathan is a gargantuan elemental, and it's neutral, so it's not swinging either way. It just does what it does. It's an AC class of 17. And it's an average hit point of 328, 16 d20 plus 160. That's really strong. This thing can fight a demon or a devil. Uh, it has an average movement speed of 40 feet, but its swim speed is 120 feet. Catch this dude in a fucking, like, in a water battle. Like, you're, you're screwed. You're not going to fight it very well. It has a strength of 30 plus 10, dexterity of 24 plus 7, constitution of 30 plus 10, intelligence of 2 minus 4. So this thing cannot be reasoned with. That is a very big thing. It cannot be reasoned with. It has a wisdom of 18 plus 4 and a charisma of 17 plus 3. Probably do it doesn't have any languages. It's not smart enough to know any languages. But it is really cool at the fact that it has a high charisma for some fucking reason that I don't understand. I would have had it as a low charisma, but hey. What can I say? Uh, its saving throws are Wisdom, plus 10, and Charisma, plus 9, meaning that it has a plus 6 to its proficiency bonus. It has a damage resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks, uh, and damage immunities to acid and poison. I would say it has vulnerability to lightning. Uh, that is a very big thing. This thing is a war being. That is a very big thing. I would even say it has damage resistance to fire and cold. That's a very big thing also. Uh... Its condition immunities are exhaustion, grappled, paralyzed, petrified, poisoned, prone, or strained and stunned. It has dark vision up to 116 feet to 100. Fuck. It has dark vision up to 60 feet. My bad. And passive perception of 14. Of course, it doesn't speak or know any languages. 
and it's a challenge rating 20, 25,000 experience points. It has legendary resistance, so if you guys are uh, know my Viking Gods uh, playlist, then you will know that I use this extensively. <laughs> legendary resistance. Three times a day, it has the ability to uh, succeed on a failed saving throw that it has failed so far. It has an ability called Partial Freeze. Uh, if the Leviathan takes 50 cold damage or more during a single turn, the Leviathan partially freezes until the end of the next turn. Its, its speed is reduced by 20 feet and it makes attack rolls with disadvantage. Now, I don't see that being very... Like, I would say if it takes 50 cold damage but it's resistant, uh, have it take the damage statistics for this normally. So if it, say, you deal, like, 50 and then the damage is only 25, but the damage die says 50, still have it do partial freeze. It would make sense for that. It just doesn't hurt it as bad. That's how I would do that. Uh, Siege Monster. The Leviathan deals double damage to objects and structures, including in Tidal Wave. So that means that uh, your ship, yeah, you, you're going to get fucked up. Uh, water Form. The Leviathan can enter a hostile creature's space and stop there. It can move through a narrow, a space as narrow as a one inch wide without squeezing. And this thing is fucking gargantuan. Like, the fact that it can go into a hole like that big without squeezing is extremely impressive. Uh, it has multi-attack. Uh, it makes two attacks, one with its slam and one with its tail. Of course, me and Ed don't really care about that. Uh, we use whatever attacks we want. Uh, it's a slam. Its slam attack is a melee weapon attack, plus 16 to hit, reach up 20 feet, one target only. Uh, its average damage is 15, 1d10 plus 10, bludgeoning damage, plus 5 average, 1d10 acid damage. Its tail attack is uh, it's a melee weapon at uh, attack, plus 16 to hit, reach up 20 feet, one target only. Average 16, 1d12 plus 10, bludgeoning damage, plus 6 average, 1d12 acid damage. And then its last attack is called Tidal Wave. It's uh, on a D6 roll of 6 on recharge. And while submerged, the Leviathan magically creates a wall of water centered on itself. The wall is up... Wow, that does not make any... It makes sense, but it, like the way it's actually phrased is stupid. The wall is up 20 feet long, up to 20, 250 feet high, and up to 50 feet thick. That's fucking big. When the wall appears, all of the creatures with... The, Within its area, must make a DC 24 strength saving throw. A creature takes 33 60 10 bludgeoning damage on a failed save, or half as much on a successful one. At the start of each Leviathan turn, after the wall appears, the wall, along with any other creatures in it, moves 50 feet away from the Leviathan. Any huge or smaller creature inside the wall whose space that wall enters when it moves must make a DC 24 strength saving throw or take 27 average 5d10 bludgeoning damage. A creature takes this damage no more than once a turn. At the end of each of the turns, the wall moves. The wall's height is reduced by 50 feet. The damage creature takes a, from the wall's subsequent rounds is reduced by 1d10. When the wall reaches 0 feet in height, the effect ends. A creature caught in the wall that can move by swimming because of the... Hold on, that's just confusing. Creature caught in the wall can move by swimming. Okay, that makes sense. Because of the wall, the force of the wave, though, the creature must make a successful DC 24 strength athletics check to swim all at all during the swim. So basically, because that took me a little bit to understand, basically, because of this tidal wave, if say you're in water, Janazi, you're probably not going to have any issues like drowning or anything, but your creature like can swim in water. So because of how strong that wave is coming at you and stuff like that and how strong it's like whipping around, you're going to have to make it DC 24 strength save. Just be able to swim to make sure you're not taking damage. That's actually really useful to know. I didn't even... I read this before I even did my stuff, but it's really cool that they added that in. And then it can make three legendary actions. Uh, it can move up, its, it, uh, up to its speed. And note that legendary actions, it can take it in between any one turn and... Uh, so I'll read it so it, it, you can understand it. The Viathan can make three legendary actions. Choosing from the options below, only one legendary action can be used at a time at, and only at the end of another creature's turn. The Leviathan regains spent legendary actions at the start of its turn. So basically, say, little little Jimmy uh, is about to attack, right? It's his turn. Uh, he uses his turn, and then the Leviathan attacks little Jimmy. Little Jimmy's dead. Then... Uh, Little Beth is shooting him with lightning arrows, and it hurts him. 
guess who's going to die next? That, 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 that's how it's basically going to work. The, the Leviathan is smart enough to know who's hurting it. It's not so dumb to ignore basic survival instinct. But uh, Slam, it costs two actions. The Leviathan can make one Slam attack, and then obviously I said a move. It can move up to its speed. Now imagine this thing. I would say it has a charge attack. Did I write charge on here? No. But imagine this thing charging at you. It uses one of its turns to move 120 feet in water towards your boat, towards you, and it just rams into you. Do you think you're not going to get hurt by that? No. This thing is going to beat the fuck out of you by doing that. I don't even know what to add for that. I would say like 3d10 bludgeoning damage and then 2d8 acid damage just for that. I don't imagine that thing would not hurt. But anyways, here's the optional thing. The uh, Leviathan's optional abilities that I gave it. Uh, summon water elementals. It is an elder ele uh, elemental evil. It's going to be able to su uh, summon these motherfuckers. Uh, it summons 2d4 water elementals within, uh, within 60 feet in unoccupied spaces. Uh, of course, I said it's vulnerable to lightning. Now, I would say that within its sight, within 60 feet, but I don't think it would necessarily matter. So, who knows how you want to run it. I would say that it does it with, uh, within 60 feet of the Leviathan in general. Uh, I gave an ability called Ice Shard. Now, note, this is basically magic missile, just an ice form. Uh, 2d4 Ice Shards are thrown at one or more targets. Calculate each as an attack. It's uh, 1d6 damage plus 13 to hit, and then two, uh, the range is 60 to 240 feet. Now, I just made the ranges up. It's probably like more like 5 to 240 feet. But it's basically magic missile, but a lot stronger. Uh, I gave an ability called Freeze Water. Uh, it freezes a 15-foot cube of water. Any target that is able to make a DC 17 dexterity save isn't frozen for one minute where it stands. So basically, say you're in this 15-foot cube and you and your friends are all around each other, like in that cube, and he freezes it, you're screwed. <laughs> like if you don't make that dex save. Uh, you could up that ante to 24 like the rest of it is, but I'm trying to be nice. Uh, that's the wrong paper. I had my phone. Uh, and I gave it a bite attack. It's a plus 16 to hit, uh, range of 20 feet, 15 average, 3d10 plus 10. I don't know why I said 15 average. That's not, that's 25 average, uh, or 20 average, I think. Uh, piercing damage, and then uh, 6 average, 1d12 acid damage. That's what I did for its bite. And I would say if you get bit by that motherfucker, you're probably going to be considered grappled too. So you probably have to do a DC 24 strength saving throw just to make sure you're not grappled by that thing. So if you're like a bard or, or a sorcerer or something like that, that doesn't require a lot of strength, you're probably not getting it out of that. Uh, yeah, that is the end of the Leviathan. Uh, thank you guys for watching this somewhat longer video than the rest. Uh, there was a lot to cover inside of this. Uh, the phoenix is probably going to be much shorter. I do like the word phoenix. Uh, my name Vietnamese actually uh, means phoenix to what I've been, or at least half of it does. Uh, so it's weird because I've heard it multiple different ways. So it's really cool. And uh, But yeah, please leave a like and subscribe as I bring more D&D content in the future. Hit that bell notification button so you guys can be notified of whenever I bring more of these videos out. Uh, I have nothing else to say. <laughs> I forgot. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. Bye.